Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe and explain the trend in first ionization energy down a group. You should then be able to explain what's meant by successive ionization energies. And finally, you should be able to use data from successive ionization energies to determine the group of an element. In the last video, we looked at how the first ionization energy changes across a period from left to right. Remember that the first ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in their gaseous state to form one mole of one positive ions, also in their gaseous state. In this video, we're looking at how the first ionization energy changes moving down a group. I'm showing you here the first ionization energies of lithium, sodium, and potassium, which are in group 1. As you can see, the first ionization energy decreases as we go down a group. This is due to two factors. Firstly, moving down a group, the atomic radius increases. This means that the outer electron shell is further away from the nucleus. Secondly, going down a group, the number of internal electron shells also increases. This means that there's more shielding between the nucleus and the outer electrons. Both of these factors mean that going down a group, the attraction between the nucleus and the outer electrons decreases. This causes the first ionization energy to fall. You'll notice that the nuclear charge increases as we move down a group. However, the effect of this is offset by the two factors we've just looked at. OK, so as we've seen, the first ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in their gaseous state to form one mole of one positive ions, also in their gaseous state. And I'm showing you that here for the element oxygen. Now we can continue to remove electrons and measure the ionization energies. These are called successive ionization energies. I'm showing you here the successive ionization energies of the element oxygen. There are two things you need to note about this graph. Firstly, in the case of oxygen, we can see a gradual increase in ionization energy as we remove the first six electrons. This is because each time we remove an outer electron, the remaining electrons in the outer shell are pulled slightly closer to the nucleus. This means that there's a greater attraction between the outer electrons and the nucleus, and this causes the ionization energy to gradually increase. Secondly, there is a massive increase in ionization energy when we remove the seventh electron. We can explain that by looking at the electrons in the oxygen atom. The first six electrons are all found in the second electron shell. But once we've removed these electrons, the seventh electron is removed from the first electron shell. Compared to the second electron shell, the first electron shell is closer to the nucleus, and electrons in the first shell experience much less shielding. This means that the electrons in the first shell have a greater attraction to the nucleus compared to the electrons in the second shell. This explains why the ionization energy is much greater for the seventh and eighth electrons compared to the first six electrons. Now in the exam you could be asked to use ionization energy data to identify an element. I'm showing you here the first six ionization energies for an element in period three. We're going to work out which element is shown. I should point out that I'm not showing you all of the ionization energies, just the first six. In order to answer this question, we need to work out the number of electrons in the outer shell. As you can see, the ionization energy gradually increases up to the fourth ionization, and then massively increases when we get to ionization number five. This tells us that this element has four electrons in its outer shell. The fifth electron must have been removed from an internal shell which is why the fifth ionization energy is much greater than the previous four. Because we know that this element has four electrons in its outer shell, we know that it must be in group four. Looking at the periodic table, the element in group four period three is silicon. In the next video, we look at how bonding and structure vary across the periodic table.